Audio, welcome back to another episode. So something a little bit different this one, as you can see, knocking up a couple of outdoor chairs. This is in between a couple other jobs that I got, so I thought I would do a little something for my mum. So my mum was looking at some outdoor chairs and I've seen the ones she was gonna buy. I'm like, mm, yeah, don't know about that. I reckon I can do better. So here they are. So if you're interested in seeing how I knock these things up, stay tuned. Also, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, it'd be pretty sweet if you hit that thing right about now. Don't know where it is, down here, up here. I don't know if you're on your phone or computer or whatever. So hit that thing, really helps out the channel, but let's just get stuck into it. Righto, so first things first, I'm gonna cut up all the timber that I need for this. So I've actually done a little bit of a cutting list for this job because I've actually designed it all on the computer. So I was able to just get all the measurements that I need. So. I'll uh, cut everything up first, and then uh, we'll start getting into it from there. So let's keep cutting. Righto, so I've got a couple of pieces that I need to rip down the guts of the timber. So I've got a couple of braces that I need to rip down and a few rails. So this will make sense as I'm putting it together, but First thing you've got to do is rip these down. So I've got a nice little square, I guess. So let's uh, rip it down. So on the back piece of the bench seat, I've actually got like a half flat sort of thing that I'm doing. So going to actually use the browder to chonk out a whole run along this piece and I can cut in half and use that as the top and bottom rails for the backrest. So I'll set up the router and I'll uh, rip this down a bit and we'll be able to get on to the next bit. Alrighty, so now that I've got those rails done for the backrest, I'm actually going to notch out the opposite side for each of the vertical uprights for that backrest. So just marked out where I need to cut out. So I'll do like a test piece first, set up the drop saw, give this a test cut, see if she's all good, and then we'll cut the rest. So drop saw actually has this little stopper which stops the blade from going all the way down. So what I'll do is, I'll screw this back and forth, set the height of the cut to make sure it doesn't go past that line that I marked. And then I'll pretty much just run a series of cuts and yeah, knock all that out. Easy as that. And that's it. So the reason why I put this piece um, clamped down the back of the saw is just so I can run the blade the whole way through where if I was to try to put this right up against the fence, then the blade height, because it's a bit raised, it doesn't actually follow all the way through. So that's why I've got that little block there. So let's go test this out, make sure she's all good, and then we can cut the rest of them. Righto, so now that I've got all the pieces cut, it should be pretty straightforward from here. What I'm sort of planning on doing is just splitting it up into a few different segments. So I'll do like the base piece that you sit on first, then I'll do the sides and then the backrest and then put all those pieces together. So it should all work out good, I'm hoping. Now, so what I'm gonna start off with first is the base. So I've got a couple of rails which will run the length of the seat pretty much. And then I've ripped down a piece just to mount each of the slats on. So these will run along the rail on each side. So this will just ensure that I don't have like a million screws on the outside of the face. So you don't see any of the screws going into each of the seat slats. Essentially, I'll have the rail and the I don't know, we'll call it the mounting rail, fixing rail. On the bottom of that, these will sit on top and then I can screw fix from underneath. So, I don't know, hopefully that should make sense as I'm putting it together. And then either side, I'll have the end pieces which will fix to the sides of the frame. So, 
they'll run either side like that. And yeah, let's just start putting it together. Righto, so there you go. So that's the base done. So essentially, I just got all the rails on and two end pieces. So these end pieces are actually going to have to come off to help me build the side pieces. So I wanted to put it onto the base. So I've got the screws already pre-drilled where they need to go. So when I put the base back onto the side rails, they'll just put themselves in the right spot. So what I'll do now is I'll pop those two end pieces off and start building the sides. Alrighty, so for the side leg armrest piece, I've got the two legs, which will go obviously the side. I've got the armrest section, which goes straight on top. And then I have the rail from the base that we made earlier, which will come down here to get the height of the armrest in relation to the base. Got this, um, I'm going to call it, I don't know, brace fixing piece. So this will act as two things, as a spacer for the base and the armrest, as well as fixing point for the back rest section later. So this will fix in here and this is what's going to help me space out the distance between the base and the handrail for the armrest section. So bang all this together and we'll get on to the next bit. Righto, so now that we got the base done and the two sides, I can just mount these straight back into the original holes that we drilled earlier onto those side rails, which goes onto the base. So we'll just turn this on its side. That should just bump in there. I'll clamp that up, put the, put the screws back in, and she's good to go. Righto, so next is the backrest. So I've got the rail that I routed out that half flap, which will match up with the backrest slats. So that'll run in there like that. So I haven't cut that to length, just in case the measurements didn't work out perfect when I built the actual chair. So, so now I can take the measurement for the length of the rails, which will be the inside dimension of these armrest sections. So I'll measure those up cut those to size, then I'll be able to make a quick frame up with the two end pieces and start putting all the internal uh, backrest slats to line up with the base slats. So those line, that line should match all the way up as we go from the base to the back. So uh, yeah, let's start cutting all this up and putting it together. Righto, so now we've got the backrest done, I can uh, look at mounting it onto the rest of the seat now. So the idea is the bottom side of the seat will actually sit flush at the back and the back part where it intersects with the back of the armrest, it'll be flush with that back corner. So this will just slide in here, it'll sit above the base of the seat about five mil just to allow any water that wants to come through there just to fall through. And then this back edge of the backrest will actually run, will actually sit flush with the back of the seat there. So I'll uh, clamp this up, put a couple of screws in from those side pieces that we that I put in onto the armrest side and that should hold her in place.
Righto, so all that's left to do now is get these cross braces in. So I've got a little bit of a diagonal half lap I need to work out how to do on the mitosaur. And then I've got another couple of brace pieces along the bottom legs just to stop the bottom part of the legs to want to move in and out over time. So chuck those in, then I can start pulling most of all the slats off again because I'm going to get ready to give it a bit of a finish. So let's uh, start working out these cross braces. Righto, so next little tricky sort of section is a cross brace that I want to implement into the armrest, leg, side situation, area, hit, whatever you want to call this side. Anyway, so I've got a couple of pieces that I've ripped down in half and essentially I'm going to put one there, one there, but I want to half lap the center of it so they interlock in each other and I don't have like two tiny bits that I've got to try and fix in there somehow. So I'm going to work out the angles, cut the ends of it, get the other piece, do the same, and then I'll uh, mark out for the half lap and, I don't know, do something to work out that angle and cut it on the drop saw. So uh, yeah, let's do it. So I'm just going to mark out the center line, line that up with the corner, I'm going to mark the back of it. So I've got a little right angle there, right angle there. Try cut it on the drop saw. Right ho, so other side's done. Did it go uh, as smoothly as the first side? No, you'd think that after doing one side, the other side would be nice and easy. Bloody hell, like, attempt number one, two, three. I may have absolutely cracked it with this one. I smashed it on the ground, but attempt number four. Anyway, we got there in the end. So she's snug, nice fit now. So. I'm going to put a screw in at the inside of these cross braces on each side just to align the center and just keep it all together. So I will put a screw in the cross brace back to the frame later after I've done all the finish on the timber. I want to be able to just pull it all apart easier now and so I can you know get to all the little spots later and just sand everything. So I am going to be doing that charred timber burnt look, that Shosugi barn like I've done on some other timber here in the shed. So that will be pretty good for outside use and you get that sort of dark timber look without buying the expensive wood. So I'm gonna pull this apart so all the slats will come off on the back and the base. These cross braces will come off. I'll burn it all in, brush it back, sand it back, put it all back together. We can put a bit of, uh, got some linseed oil to put on top of it as well. I might actually also just hit the corners of all the timber with the round over bit on the router as well. Let's do it. Forgot to mention, I'm just gonna put this little brace piece on the bottom of the legs just to stop the legs from wanting to sort of like splay in or out. So I'm just gonna put a couple of bugles in and it'll just be set up about 70 mil. So a whole thickness of the timber up from the leg. So get these on. Righto, so finally that's done. So what I've done was I obviously burnt it in with the blowtorch, went through two blowtorches, can you believe it? So I burned it with the blowtorch, I brushed it back with some scotch bright, just some like abrasive like sponge I guess, and then sanded it back to the sort of color that I want, just to you know expose a bit of the grain a bit. 
And then now I'm about to wash it down with some methylated spirits, get all the like remaining like ash and all the like charcoal stuff off. So I'll get that off, make sure she's all dry, and then I can get ready to put the linseed oil on. So let's do it. Right ho, job done. So, all that's left to do now, drop it off down at Mum's, see what she reckons. So, let's get on down. Oi, <laughs> Right ho, so, job done. Now, this should last a while compared to that old bunnies thing that Mum was gonna get. So, I'm having a crack at bunnies now, maybe I better not do that. So, here she is. There's probably a couple of other little things that we'll build along the way. Don't know if I film it, I don't know, let me know. But. Hope you enjoyed that, got something out of it. And uh, that's the end of that episode. So until the next one, keep having a crack. We'll see you there.